David felt she was really clear right away that he didn't want to do a realistic acting style or the way he's going to stage certain scenes won't be realistic interactions of characters or expressions of emotions. It's going to be uh, more expressionistic and distorted. And so I knew that from the outset. Um, However, our approach to the youth in the story is actually realistic. It's um, period, it's 1890s, um, German, but then with the adult characters, that's what's not realistic. And so with the designs for those, I was actively looking for ways to kind of provoke non-realistic gestures and movements or to limit the movement in the adult characters. So, so in a way, so the, the end solution for, for the adult characters is to have them in masks um, and in these sort of shrouds over their body, partly to, to limit um, their body movement as far as connecting with other characters through their arms and things like that. Some of them have arms, um, but also to um, obscure their legs. I love doing research <laughs> for plays. It's one of my favorite parts of the process. Um, and it's actually, it's a big part of my creative process. I think some people think of research as something you sort of do and it's your homework and then you get on to the creative work. And the whole process of doing research and collecting imagery is very creative in itself. But this one I was able to find really detailed and very personal photography of family groups and um, school photos, like class photos of children and their teachers. So that was immensely helpful. Um, so I'll get, you know, kind of one round of feedback from the research and then I'll start doing line drawings. And then I'll meet again with the director and, and often with the design group as a whole. Based on how we're feeling about those, I'll revise those um, and share revisions. And then again, you know, do whatever tweaking I need to do. And then I'll invest the time in painting them. So Melchior, with him, I did um, try to create an outfit within the look of the, the young men I saw in the school photos, a very kind of matched and tailored outfit where some other characters might be less matched, more worn in, or, you know, like there's a different history behind the clothes or if they've been altered a lot to, to you know, fit them as they grow. Moritz is a little different in being a non-matched outfit, just as far as a contrast to him. Um, a bit more worn in, but very presentable, like his parents want him to, you know, look respectful and nice. They don't want him to embarrass them. And I also did an asymmetrical coat on him just to show that something that, like there's a little bit of uneasiness there or lack of confidence or something in there. And so I thought just a bit of asymmetry with, with him would help just to, sh you know, kind of throw Melchior into contrast. Um, but with Wendla, what I'm mostly accomplishing in her clothes is to show that her mother has tried to shelter her. So she is quite covered up and just very, very kind of simple, not showy, but nice, you know, nice and pretty. There's some girlish lace on her, uh, but she is more covered up and sheltered, but still, you know, she's been kind of kept in a state of ignorance. The first thing I do is go to our costume storage. We have a, a warehouse space where we keep all of our clothes from past productions and donations and things like that. Um, I go out there and spend, um, I show like uh, Awakening of Spring, I spent cumulatively probably a week out at the warehouse. At the same time, I know I need to get materials here for things that are going to be made to Lisa or she's not going to have enough time to complete things. So as soon as I've gotten that polling done, I do tend to go out. I'll go to the garment district in New York and shop for fabrics that we need just to make sure that they're here in time for when Lisa needs those. Um, and then at that point, either I'll have a round of fittings to see if what I pulled worked or if I still need a lot of other pieces, which is usually the case, I do some amount of purchasing 
of things that can be altered or whatever to work with the look of the show. In, in every production, um, we're combining things that are pulled, purchased and altered, rented and made. It's all different things combined to, you know, complete the, to satisfy the look of each sketch that I've done. So we have a lot of students involved in the costume shop working within our PMA 1610 production lab. So um, they get course credit while they're working here with uh, Lisa in the costume shop and I'm kind of floating through <laughs> working with them depending on what days they're they're in uh, but it's a great way to learn from Lisa um, sewing skills appropriate to theater and actually work on the clothes whether it's altering clothes or assembling new things um, that Lisa has draped and patterned or even working on craft work like we're doing masks sometimes it's working on shoes and accessories but they get to do all different kinds of things including maintaining the shows as well once they're running so that's a great way to be involved um, if someone's interested in seeing the show up on its feet backwards <laughs> we have backstage opportunities so there's the 2610 production lab that is running the show so that's when students get to work with actors backstage and listen to what the director is saying during tech rehearsals and all that so that's kind of a way to see it all come together you know that sort of last push of getting a show up on its feet um, if students are just interested in costume design uh, the biggest advice I have is to see as much as you can see as many uh, performances, plays, dance, opera, and film. And then also, if they're interested in costume design, take my class. I offer costume design every spring, and uh, and it's really fun and interesting, and, and we kind of go step by step through the process on three different stories that we work on in there. I'd say relative to this production, because we're still in the middle of creating it, I'm just really excited to see it come together. You know, it's not one that um, is crystal clear in my mind what it, how it's going to feel and what it's all going to mean when it's, it's on stage together because we're taking some risks. But I think that this is the place to do it. We're not doing commercial theater. You know, we can we can kind of think deeply about it and work hard on it and experiment and, and see what happens. And I think the collaboration has been really good so far, you know, with David and Carolyn and all the actors and, and the design team. So, um, so I think we're, I don't know, we're making some interesting choices. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how it all comes together.